Runtime, your finger on the pulse of the software world. I'm Lainey Brown. And I'm Luke Massey. Welcome to our show. Today we're going to be talking about podcasting, and uh, today we're just going to go over the basics and then we'll get into some detail in later episodes. So Lainey, since you've been researching this all week, do you want to go ahead and tell us a little bit about what podcasting is? Okay, podcasting. In industry terms, it's time-shifted radio. In uh, user terms, it's uh, on-demand audio and video. In other words, it allows you to receive uh, pre-recorded content, much like this show, and uh, by subscribing to the RSS URL with your podcatching program, play it on your computer or you know your portable device uh, such as an iPod. Cool. Okay, well, there's a lot of big words in there, kind of industry terms. You want to break it down a little bit? Uh, maybe start with RSS and explain what that is. Okay, for RSS. Really simple syndication. Okay. Okay. Use your RSS to de- distribute blog content, news headlines, photographs, audio. Uh, RSS is a subset of XML. XML is um, a way to format data. There's a HTML, which is used for websites, and then uh, there's another XML, which is a uh, much simpler and easier form. It's uh, RSS. So okay. you got HTML and then RSS. So if I wanted to look at this with my web, web browser, does it work in a web browser, or how does that work? Yeah. Uh, you probably wouldn't like it that much. Uh, the, the much most of the web browsers won't display it uh, any better than a, a web page web page can. Okay, so um, it's better not using a web browser than, well, what, what do we do with it if we can't look at it in our web browser? Uh, well, that's where the RSS reader comes in. And uh, let's say you read slash dot dig, your two best friends, blogs, uh, or the AP Newswire every day. So I have no life. I just need both content <laughs> it's on the on the computer all day long. Okay. Well, since... All that takes up half of your day, looking at all the different websites and, you know, clicking on through the scrolling and to find what you want to look at. Right, Instead of looking yeah. at all that crap, you just get the RSS feed of the things that you want to see, uh, put the URL for that into your RSS reader and uh, subscribe to it. And then it gives you an outline of all the headlines of everything that you want to look at. Cool. So it's just right there. So that's great for blogs and news and stuff, but how's that related to podcasting? I mean, what's, well, how does it work? Podcasting is a subset, again, of RSS. It's the exact same thing as RSS uh, with the addition of an enclosure link or tag. Uh, instead of using an RSS reader to browse your headlines, they would use what's called a podcatcher. Podcatcher. And uh, this program will download your favorite shows when they air and then you know, it'll save it so that you can tune in whenever you want to see it. So we use a podcatcher to view the podcast. Yes. Makes sense. Now, we call our show a vodcast, but, I mean, how is that different from a podcast, or is it the same thing? It's a hazy topic. Yeah. Podcasting can mean video or audio, but some people are kind of anal about that. You know, yeah, they are. Producer key grip. Uh, to them, it's it, the definition between podcasting and vodcasting is vodcasting is first is strictly just on-demand video. Just podcasting is strictly just audio. But it, it works both ways for me. You could use podcasting to, to, to refer to audio and video yeah. if you wanted, but vodcasting is just video, right? Yeah. Okay. Are there like separate podcasting and vodcasting programs, or can you use the same program for all of that, or how does it work? Yeah, you use the same software for both. So one podcatcher will do vodcast and podcast. Yeah. You don't need separate software. No. Cool. All right, and uh, did you run across any good podcatchers in your research? <laughs> Some very good ones, yes. Uh, but we're going to talk about that next week. Oh, next week, but, okay. But, you know, something to think about is, you know, you got a Juice, formerly known as iPodder, and uh, iTunes. Yeah, but, I remember iPodder. And Linux okay. doesn't have iTunes. Well, that's a whole nother show. We're going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. Watch the stuff that comes on next because it's great. Keep watching. Senator Lieberman kicked out of the Democratic Party. Dolphins may be dimwits. And Apple Computers answers sweatshop allegations. Hi, I'm Mark Hopkins, and you're watching Potted Meat.
Facing Senator Joe Lieberman's independent candidacy, Republican officials at the state and national level have made ex the extraordinary decision to abandon their official candidate, and some are actively working to help Mr. Lieberman win in November. Senator Lieberman was recently defeated in the Democratic primary for his district after the party heavily supported his opponent, Ned Lamont, effectively removing the senator from the Democratic Party as he pursues his campaign as an independent. A Reuters interview with a South African scientist reveals that while dolphins may have big brains, lab rats and even goldfish can outwit them. Paul Manger of the Johannesburg University of Witwatersand says the supersized brains of dolphins, whales, and porpoises are a function of being warm-blooded in a cold water environment and not a sign of intelligence. Apple Computer had a lot to answer for when a British tabloid in June alleged that some of the company's iPod music players are being made under sweatshop conditions. Soon after the mid-June report surfaced, Apple's investigations found conditions mostly acceptable but uncovered problems concerning housing and overtime. They say they're taking steps to remedy them. The investigators' results were published on Apple's website. For more news and information, head on over to pottedmeat.com. I'm Mark Hopkins, and you're watching Potted Meat. Welcome back to News and Views on Runtime, and I'm Lady Brown. And I'm Luke Massey, and Lady, I see you finally found the coffee. Wow. Okay, uh, we're just going to go over some headlines here real quick. Um, first one is about Google and AOL. It says, Google says it won't pull an AOL. Yeah, which AOL's done are you talking about? Right, well, that's true because there are a lot of things AOL does that Google would definitely not want to repeat. But no, what they're referring to here is the release of customer search data. And the idea was to, you know, for AOL to record all these searches and uh, release them without identifying information for research purposes. Well, that didn't work. Yeah, I'm glad I don't use AOL. <laughs> yeah, me too. And monkey porn. So Google has promised that they will never release any kind of data on things people search for, for this reason. Because what happened with AOL, of course, people would search for their names or social security numbers just to see if they were online. And I've then, never done that. Really? Yeah. Better start? No. <laughs> um, so anyway, they could see, you know, that someone had searched for, say, Laney Brown, and then maybe someone had searched for something else. and Monkey porn. Monkey porn, and they didn't know that Laney likes monkey porn. Which Grab it. Most people wouldn't want right. So, anyway, uh, moving on. Here's a news flash. Kids seeing more porn online. Eh, who's not? And uh, this is from littlegreenfootballs.com. Uh, it says, Reuters doctoring photos from Beirut. Have you heard anything about this, Laney? Yeah, I, I looked at them, and uh, there's the original picture. And it looks bad enough. You know, you've got smoke and building a building on fire. And, you know, yeah. it makes you want to cry a little bit. But no, head. I wasn't crying enough. So <laughs> we had somebody that actually like doctored, doctored the photo and made it look like more buildings were on fire. And they did such a bad job at it that now I'm not even sad. Yeah, you can see the... Uh, it's, they, they, like, you can see where they copied the smoke and I mean, it's pretty obvious. A little bit, yeah. Makes me makes me not so. even think that this is going to be something that's real or really happened. I know, I don't know why this they would do that. burning people and we don't even think it's real. But the Little Green Footballs, is, they're actually the people that uh, broke the Rathergate scandal, if oh. you've heard about that, with Dan Rather yeah. uh, basically lying on air about President Bush's military record. Yeah. And, uh, was... So that's some good investigating report investigative reporting by Little Green Footballs. Yeah. And our next story, actually, do you want to go ahead and introduce this one, Lainey? Transfers of movies to DVD become easier. And it says they're becoming easier, but they're not. Yeah. They've been easy. All that's happening is the movie industry is taking the current copy protection they use on DVDs. All DVDs that you buy in stores are actually encrypted, so you can't make backup copies of them easily. And what they're doing is they're allowing companies to sell videos for download that also have this kind of protection on it. That's a so good it, idea. It's not a good idea. No, it's not it making it easier. It's making it harder. It's making it harder. Like if, if you download a movie, you can't make a backup copy of it. Well, or maybe you can if you know, they're nice and let you, but what if they're not? Well, what if something happens to your hard drive and it's gone? Get another one. For fourteen ninety five. Yeah. 
No. That's it's, lame. No, it's not lame. Okay. Well, this this is a long argument, so we'll we'll have to leave it Cut at that. Cut that one short. Just agree to disagree. Kill you. Well, that's about all the time we. Yeah. Have. What? Buzzkill. Buzzkill. Okay. Buzzkill. What's our word? Buzzword compliant. Buzzword compliant. Or buzzword enabled. Yes. Or or buzzword enabled. And this is normally used disparagingly of products that seem to have been created. For the sole purpose of including as many buzzwords in their descriptions as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, an example of words commonly used right now are uh, XML, Java, peer to peer, distributed, and open. I used XML. You, you did use XML I'm, I'm, today. You're buzzword, buzzword compliant. I am buzzword compliant. Good job. And our uh, second buzzword of the day is vaporware. Vaporware. And this is a product that's announced far in advance of release. And it may or may not actually get released. It's yeah, but they generally, you know, the next coolest thing by our stock is going to be great. Want it. It's good. Eat it. <clears throat> and of course, most vaporware is buzzword compliant. That's right. And uh, let's see what's a good example. Good example of some vaporware. Vaporware. Mm. Um, there's the Phantom Game Console. If anyone heard about this? No. This company is going to make the coolest game console ever about five years ago. Yeah. And they're still wanted, working on it. I want one of those. Yeah, if it ever gets released. And uh, I guess that's about all the time we have for today. Um, I'm Luke Massey. And I'm Lainey Brown. And you've been watching Runtime. Be sure and come back next week for the second part in our series on podcasting. Email us at runtime at uh, pottedmeat.com. Thank you.